Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad to be here this morning and grateful for all of our visitors. We want you to feel welcome. I want you to feel welcome. And certainly, um, I appreciate you being here. I'm sure everybody else does. Even those that are members of this church, I'm grateful to see you here. I feel like it's been, it's been a long time since I was on an airplane, but you know they go through this long thing about uh, flying and they're glad that you flew with them. But at one point they say, we know you had a choice. And we're glad that you chose our airline. Well, I'm glad that you chose Christ Temple. I know you had a choice. You could have been anywhere, you, anywhere else. I'm glad you chose to be with us today. And, and around 1 o'clock, you know, we have our remembrance service for Deacon Willard. Um, and I, we'll have dinner right afterwards. Please stay, eat, let's talk, fellowship with each other, enjoy each other's company, and, and uh, be friendly with each other. Amen. So I, you know what? When I said eat, everybody, amen, amen. As soon as I said be friendly, Everybody just looked. Be friendly with each other. Amen. I know the Bible says that we're supposed to love our enemies. Didn't Jesus tell us that? Uh, sometimes we struggle with folks that just get on our nerves. What would we do if somebody really was our enemy and we can't get up over the hurdle of they, they just bug me the way they chew gum. All right, I'll leave that alone. I ain't what my message is about today. I, I just want us to be friendly with each other. Go downstairs and eat, and if somebody got grease all over their fingers, that's all right. Let them have greasy fingers, as long as they're not touching you. Crumbs on their mouth, that's fine. Let them have crumbs. Don't be mad at them. They enjoying food their way. All right. So if you open your Bibles, I just want to be nice at first because the message today is not, you know, it's not a exciting kind of a thing. It's, yeah. amen. In the book of Zephaniah, yes, one of them scary Old Testament books. But you know, when you're doing like you're supposed to do, you ain't got nothing to be scared of. Come on, Pastor. And I have people come to me and say, well, you, you know, it's just like they say in the book of Revelations. I started telling people now, I ain't worried about that. I won't even be here. Why, why should I get all shook up over it? You know, people will make up things. You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelations that in the last days, you won't even be able to tell the seasons. I said, it don't say that. But what it does say should scare you into doing right, but I'm not scared. <laughs> All right. All right. In the book of Zephaniah, chapter number one. And we're just going to read verses four through six. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah mm -hmm. and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. And the name of the Chimerians with the priest. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetop. And them that worship and that swear by the Lord. And that swear by Malcolm. And them that are turned back from the Lord. And those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired for him. I'm going to stop there and then go to the book of Ecclesiastics, chapter number 12. Now that one's an easier one, easier to find. It's right between Proverbs and Song of Solomon. Proverbs, or Ecclesiastics, chapter number 12. Got two verses there. Very last two. 
And before we read, let me just let me just preface this by saying the Bible says that Solomon was the wisest king that ever lived. Solomon talked about the fact that he tried everything under the sun. He tried he tried alcohol, he tried women. Yeah. He tried solitude. Yes, he, did. he tried being wise, and then he even acted like he was dumb. He did many things just to see what it was like, just to have the experience. Then after we're finished, the last two verses of this is how he concludes the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now I have just one more scripture in the book of Luke. And that way, those that don't believe in the Old Testament, we got a little New Testament to go along with it. Luke chapter number 11. And Luke 11 in just one verse. This is Jesus talking. Luke chapter number 11 and verse number 9. And I will say unto you, or I'm sorry, and I say unto you, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. All right. This morning I want to speak from the thought, what are you looking for? Part of, part of uh, this is dealing with people who are church folks. I know that there are times when we feel like because we go to church, that somehow puts us in a special place with God because at least we have respected him enough to take a day a week and and come visiting. And I cannot tell you how much I wish That was what God was looking for. It would be wonderful if I could go do what I want to do. And as long as I come to church on Sunday, that God is pleased with me. I don't think that you can get to heaven by displeasing God. And in the book of Zephaniah, he's dealing with a group of people that would go to church. And they were doing something that is more dangerous than anything that I know of as far as a spiritual walk. Not only did they serve God, they served other gods too. Now, it's one thing when someone doesn't know anything about God, and you're trying to relay to them this experience that you have with him. It's another thing when someone already serves God, and you all are encouraging each other in your walk with God. But what about the man that says, I've got four gods, and you come and tell him about Jesus, and he says, all right, I'll add him right in too. Mm -hmm. Now, Now, that is a very dangerous thing because we can get lost in the fact that they're willing to accept it and not understand that he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only Only. shalt thou serve. And so... When we come to him Mm -hmm. with the idea that I can just add him in the mix, we already messed up really bad. I, I would like to ask this. If 
The other gods were so good, what, what do you need to add another one in for anyway? You, you don't really need to. Now, some of you all might be jealous because I'm driving a Prius. I understand that. It's got some ponies under the hood. And I get good gas mileage. I like my car. I do. I'm not upset. If somebody come along and let's say they offered me a Mercedes Benz or something, I don't want it. I'm, I'm happy with what I got. Okay, that's a bad example. <laughs> let's say somebody came along and offered me a 1977 Chevy Vega. Yes, sir. All right. I don't want it. Because the car I have is better than that. I'm not talking about a winter car. I'm talking about a just regular everyday driving car. Now, if there's anyone here that does have a Mercedes that they're willing to give away, <laughs> come see me right after church. We need, we need to talk. <laughs> In Zephaniah, God is rebuking his people because some of them were serving Molech. And that's what Malcolm is, is Molech. And this was a, a very nasty kind of religion where they not only sacrificed to him, they did human sacrifices to Molech, they also sacrificed children. To Molech. It was a it was a pretty bad thing altogether. They the Bible says that they would um, pass their children through the fire. That's what they were, that's what that's talking about. That was uh, a part of that specific religion. Was if you wanted some certain things, whatever it was, then you would offer up one of your children. That's a I don't care what culture you're in, don't care how you was raised, that's a, that's a pretty bad thing. Matter of fact, there are times when, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a jump up and get in people's face kind of person, but let me see somebody hurting a child or someone that's old that can't protect themselves and I'm, I might be in here silenced my own self because I don't, I don't like that. Don't bother with people that can't help themselves. In our society, I think that's one of the worst things that, that you can do. People go to prison because they violated somebody's rights, but even they've got standards. You molest a child or hurt an old person and you go to prison, the criminals don't like you. That's a bad thing when you go there and the criminals don't like you because you're not going to survive long. Man, you can go in there and, hey, I killed five people. Oh, you know, you got some credibility now. I killed a four-year-old. Oh, you going. They're going to get you. Oh, yeah. So those that were worshiping Molech, that was a, that was a very a particularly nasty kind of religion. And the Jewish people... God had warned him, when you come into the land, don't, don't pick up the habits of the people that were already here. That's the reason why I'm kicking them out of the land. He tells Abraham that. At one point he said, I am not going to allow you to go into Canaan just yet because the sin of the Amorites is not full yet. God was allowing them some time, some leeway to kind of get themselves together. And after a while, he just kicked them out of the land and gave it to somebody else. Yeah. And he told his people, when you get there, don't do like they did, because if you do, I'll kick you out like I kicked them out. Yeah. It's important for us to understand, even when you have a relationship with God, that you don't get to just go do what you want to do and God will accept it. 
There were others in here where he said that they not only worship the host of heaven, but you worship the Lord too. He just kind of mixed it all together. Hey, I don't have no problem with your God as long as you ain't got a problem with mine. Let's just get together and have one nice religion. On Saturday, we won't go out. We'll observe the Sabbath. And then on Sunday, we'll go and worship to the gods of the heavens. You know, they do, just doing all, all kind of crazy things. But here was God's complaint. The people said, we don't know you. We don't know who you are. I don't, I don't think we really get that because we live in a nation where religion is so free. But when you are being oppressed... When you are surrounded by other people who want to do other things and they're spiritual too, watch that, y'all. There are people who claim to be spiritual, but they're not believers in God. They're believers in luck. They, their contention was God, with God was the fact that we don't know you. Our priest didn't tell us about you. Our prophets didn't come and tell us who you were and how to serve you. We just, we were kind of lost in all of this. And he said, I'm coming through, not just because you served other gods, because none of you even ask about me. You didn't look for me. You didn't come to find me. You didn't come and, and ask, what about what God says about it? You just did what you wanted to do. And then, when God's hammer starts to come down, all of a sudden it's, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I didn't know. Oh, you know, Jesus sums it all up like this. And I say unto you, ask. That, that's, if we just stop right there, that, that stops a whole lot of stuff. Because there are a lot of people who talk about church people that talk about church people, people that talk about the Bible, people that talk about how much they believe in the Bible, how much they don't believe in the Bible. They talk about a whole lot of stuff, but how many of them took the time to ask? How many of them stopped long enough to ask God about this? It's one thing for you to see somebody that goes to church and they're clowning, and you say, I don't believe that they got anything to do with church. That's fine. Yes, sir. But did you stop and ask God? The reason why I'm saying that is because there's going to come a time when people will stand before the Lord, and they're going to say, well, I didn't have any good examples. All of the people that was going to church was cutting up. They was doing what they wanted to do, and they professed to be Christians. What was I supposed to think? What was I supposed to do? The people that you entrusted to give the word wasn't giving the word. He's, but here's the thing. If you ask, you shall receive. We, we think we're going to get to heaven on hope and a prayer. Do what I think God wants me to do and hope it pans out in the end. It's not going to work like that. We have the assurance People will grab a scripture in a heartbeat and say, I know that I'm getting ready to get a raise on my job because the Bible says. They'll quote a scripture. But when it comes down to their relationship with God, they're not asking. I can tell you, I can count on one of my fingers how many times somebody has come to me and say, what more do I need to do to serve the Lord? How much... I just want to have a close relationship with him. And I've done all these things. Is there some more I can do? No, people don't do that. No, no they'll come to you and say, I need you to pray for me. That's it. I'm getting ready to apply for a job. Or I, I need you to pray for me because uh, it's raise time. And last year I didn't get a raise. And I, yeah. and I need them to give me some money because of this, that, and the other. Pray for me. I'm about to put my kids in private school because I'm tired of them going to public. All kind of prayer requests. Ain't never had nobody come to me and say, pray for me. I'm trying to be holy. Pray for me. I, I want a close, deep walk with God. I want him to be pleased with my life. I don't get those kind of prayer requests. 
I don't, I've never heard anybody stand up in church and ask for that. Because what we're not doing is asking. Ask and you shall receive. And for those that ask, sometimes we stop right there. We just say, you know what? Well, I did ask. He said, but seek. You know, you, you can't just ask for something and then walk away and hope that it happens. Seek. And you might find it. No. If you are seeking, you will find it. If you are knocking, it will be open. When he says open, is he talking about the church doors? No, your understanding. I want to be right with God. I want to be saved. That's why I go to church. But I don't understand everything I need to know. Well, then knock. Let me show you how to do it. Hop, hop. O- open it up. Don't anoint your head with oil so that you can have a good day at work. Open your Bible up, Lord. I'm getting ready to start reading my Bible. I need some direction and guidance for today. I heard what the preacher said Sunday. I was paying attention in Bible class, but it's not all sinking in. And I need you to help me here. Open some things up. Do we do that when we read our Bible? Or is it one of those kind of things where we, we're sitting at the breakfast table eating our cereal? We reach over and take the lid off the daily bread jar and pull one out and read it. Mm. Okay, hey, something good's going to happen today. Put it back in there. Now, you know you got to shuffle it up so you don't accidentally get the same one twice. You put it back in there, put the lid on it, and then walk away saying, I've read my Bible today. No, we haven't. But, Lord, I'm seeking you. But I'm only seeking you on Wednesdays during Bible class and Sunday during church. That's if somebody don't sit in my seat. They know. They know I sit there. We'll fight over anything. Oh, he stood there and held the door open for three sisters, saw me coming, let the door close, and walk away. I don't even know if I want to go to church there no more. We just get mad over stuff like that. Come on, you help me so good. Pull up in the parking lot. Ain't no place to park. I'm leaving. If they was giving money away at the bank, you'd park over here and walk to the bank. But let there be no space. Well, you know, they might bump my car. There was one spot, but it was kind of small. And I'm not parking on the street. I'm leaving. Anything to get out of coming to church. Any reason that we can think up to be mad at somebody. And I can tell you, I have had people do things to me that gave me good reason to be mad. I'm like, you know what? I am not going to allow that to disturb me and I not be able to enjoy my family or myself. You don't have that kind of control over me. You can get sassy if you want to. That's fine, but you ain't dealing with me. Okay. Don't talk it and then not live it. Don't say that it's all in God's hands. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God's going to get you. Then we sit back brooding and pouting because God didn't get them. Oh, if you got faith that God's going to handle his business, have faith he's going to handle it. Go on about yours. All right, I'm getting off the subject, and I can see that I'm losing folks now. Eyes are kind of glazing over. Here's what Solomon said. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. This is coming from the man that did everything he was big enough and bold enough to do. Went out and did all he could think of and some stuff he didn't think of. He was just having a good time. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, I know we got some men up in here. This man, Solomon, had 300 wives, 700 concubines. That's a 1,000 women. Don't get excited, brothers. That's Old Testament. Right. Some of us can't handle the one we got. Some of us don't even know how to court right. But we'll save that for another time. 
This man did it all. He said, here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Give God some respect. Don't walk around. You on fire for Jesus today, and you ain't caring nothing about him tomorrow. Well, let me be practical then. Don't come to church and rejoicing and shouting and throwing your hands up and running around and hallelujah and you crying and carrying on and go home and get into some pornography. Don't come to Bible class. Oh, pa Pastor, I got a question. So are you saying this? this oh, I'm so glad you told me that. And then go to work flirting with women that ain't your wife. Now, just for the sister's sake, you can just reverse it. Yeah. We're running out of time, and I don't want to, you know, have to go back and have to beat up the sisters. I'm, just, I'm beating this all up at one time. The whole duty of man is to give God the respect that he deserves. That's your responsibility. We're running around talking about, I need to find my purpose. Your purpose is to fear God. Respect him. Give him what belongs to him. Don't worship God when times are hard and you're looking for a blessing. Worship him when things are good. Fear God. He said, give him his respect and keep his commandments. You can't say, I love the Lord. Ooh, I'm on fire for Jesus. And you out breaking every commandment he got. You can't do that and say that you really love God. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Why is that so important? What does it have to do with anything that I've been talking about? Well, because you might say that I love the Lord, and you're sitting down looking at your astrology, hoping for some good luck, sprinkle a little salt over your shoulder, take a black candle, put it up on top of the refrigerator, forbid anybody to light it and burn it, or anything like that, and you got your little altar. You can do all of that if you want to. But God's going to bring every work into judgment. That's what he said. For God shall bring every work into judgment. God's going to look. He's watching. He's examining. And you can tell people all you want to. Oh, well, the Lord knows. Yes, he does. People will say that and they know they're wrong. Well, I didn't do it. And the Lord knows. He does. You should be careful. Make sure you're right if you're just going to talk like that. Because he's going to bring every, every work into judgment, every secret thing, the stuff that you didn't tell nobody about. God knows about it. All the little dirt you keep swept up underneath your carpet, God knows it's there. He said, I'm coming back for people without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. You can kind of sweep it under the carpet if you want to, but that's a such thing. Well, that... That, that only happens when I'm on vacation. No, that's a such thing. No, you don't sweep that under the carpet and come back and pretend like you didn't do it. Oh, no. And I'm not saying that it's okay to go and do wrong as long as you're out in the open with it. No, don't do wrong. Fear God. Keep his commandments. And be aware that he's going to judge everything. Sometimes we will try to hide stuff from our own self because we, we don't want to even think about it. I found myself doing it. I was like, you know what? I can't pretend like this didn't happen. I have to deal with this. I have to just come out and deal with it because it's real. It happened, and I know God's going to judge it. I need to repent. Ooh. All right, I'm, I'm riding by myself, and that's okay because I'm trying to get to heaven. Once you realize something is growing, some bitterness or something, he said, be careful because a root of bitterness can grow up in you. And when it does, it's hard to get rid of a root. You can cut the grass, but you ain't done nothing with the roots. That's why it keeps growing back. It's hard. I, I, I know I used to work in construction, run a backhoe, and we knocked a tree down, but we couldn't do nothing with the root. Had to dig all around it, and we were just bumping up against it. That root was holding on. It wasn't coming up out of there. All you could do was break pieces off, but the root stayed. When you allow bitterness to get in your heart, you can pretend like it's not there. But once the root gets there, the longer it grows, the harder it is to get it out. 
Don't let nothing, don't let no roots grow because eventually what's growing underneath the ground is going to start to come to the surface. When you see a plant that's starting to break through the ground for the first time, it's been growing underground for a while first. All right. I, you know what? I, I don't want to have no saints meeting, so we, we leave it alone. Just, what are you looking for? That's what God is going to eventually have you answer to him. What was you looking for? Was you looking for me or was you looking for an excuse? Amen. Was you looking for me or was you just looking for some relief? Was you looking for me, looking for truth, or was you just looking for a way to get out of trouble? Yes. Seek. You'll find him. Ask. He'll give it to you. Knock. He'll open it up to you. You know what? I didn't have any. I didn't have no idea. No, we know. Amen. Ask. Dig into it. Dig deeper. And when you think you've got it resolved, yeah. dig some more because you don't. Yeah. Keep on digging. Because as deep as you can go, God's deeper than that. Amen. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Keep on looking for more, more ways you can do better. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't let that stop you. It's like, you know what? Well, if they don't do right, I ain't going to do right. Don't be like that. If they don't do right, I got to keep on doing right. Well. Amen. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna give us a little time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be through here. We've got our, um, our remembrance service coming up here in, well, getting ready to start. Amen. And I know we need a little time to adjust for some things, so amen. Uh, let everybody say amen. 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 Okay, now that means you are, you're obliged to it, what I just preached. Yes. Amen. You agree with me. Yes. And yes, I did trick you. <laughs> So don't, but don't go out in the parking lot and say, I take it back. <laughs> Amen. Let us stand and be dismissed, and then we'll prepare for our service.